asking is 84,000. Um, they'll never get 84,000 for this, at least not for me. So some of the first things that, that, that you had said was what, what, what would make us pick this house? So let's take a look at the house. And we driving down this block, we see the front porch. It's a little dilapidated, just a little bit. The paint is off, but look at the roof. The roof got a tarp up there. Like, who, who wants to wake up every day and potentially have water in their bedroom? So people who don't get their roof fixed, it's because Nine times out of ten, they can't. Uh, then take a look at look at the house across the street. Look at that. Look at the house next door. And then we look back over here. Then we look at the house next door to this one. Nice. So you want to always try to pick the worst house on the best block. This, this happens to be the worst house on the best block. So we got, we got a nice property. It's uh, a lot of potential. It's a lot of work. But again, construction is construction. I've actually done a house like this maybe a couple of miles away from, from this property. Um, I knocked this wall down opened up the kitchen to all of this area, to the living room and dining room. Um, asking. asking is 84,000. Um, they'll never get 84,000 for this, at least not for me. Um, so one, one thing that, that, that you do want to understand is is rain and water and do you have any coming in uh, I think at some point water used to get in in here uh, but it hasn't had any water in a long time I can tell they either sealed it they with some epoxy or something like that some cracks because I see um, these different uh, holes inside uh, and typically when they do that they have filled some holes with epoxy let it expand and fill and filled up the crack so you don't have any leaks. Uh, it doesn't smell musty or moldy down here. Uh, furnace looks good. Hot water heater. See a line set, so I know we got AC. Then this has a bathroom down here. So it's a bathroom. So it's a quick, quick house, quick and easy house. It's, it's a lot of work though in this particular home though. Uh, so like I told you from the outside, you can see the roof had problems on the outside and this this is the effects of that roof don't let this stuff scare you guys because um, we are gonna take this out and, and make it all brand new anyway you see this this room don't even have a light fixture in the in the center of the room so this is going to come down anyway, so you better be able to run electrical and so you can have a nice pretty light light there. So don't let this fool you. Don't let this scare you. It's just drywall. Dry, drywall costs shit, $8 uh, for a four by eight. So, what did I say, $4? $8. So a, a, a piece of drywall is 32 square feet. 32 square feet. It's, it's, Four by eight. Um, that's typically. How big is this wall compared to that? Um, 
sheet of drywall will probably be from here to here if it's going a long way. So it's probably be like two sheets of drywall, four sheets of drywall. They cut it up, about, be about four sheets. Eight dollars for sheets each. Four by eight. Four by eight. So whenever you see holes in the wall, basically. Well, this particular wall, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't knock the wall down. It's nothing wrong with it. Um, patching and skim coating and having to replace dry walls, two different things. These walls are actually in good shape. Um, so I, I would sand them down, so we call skim coating it. I would sand them down. Uh, if it's anything that needs to be, any blemishes, things like this, once it's sanded, now it's all smooth and then it's ready for paint again. Uh, th these walls are, are really not in, in bad shape. Um, we, we would have to, you know, fix that over here where the ceiling came down, but other than that, it's not, it's not really in bad shape. So that's a whole rehab here. This ain't what we want out here. They want 84,000 for this. They tweaking. I don't, I can get it. Um, typically, cause, cause what we paid, so most we paid, we paid 77 for, for Matson. As a wholesaler because it ties into their clients in gold. And the more that they know about rehab and construction, the better salesperson they can be for the product that they... So let's talk about why it's important to actually understand and know rehab and construction. Forget about everything else that you guys have been taught in these guru classes in these workshops you know online on youtube all the places that you guys scour for free information yeah so they give you all of these little mathematical terms take the square footage times the times um thirty dollars forty dollars per square foot that should give you your average and that's fine to have as somewhere to start but Honestly, if you are going into this business to make money, you need to understand your buyers, your investors in gold. And that's where it comes to working backwards. So if I got a deal and I'm looking at this deal and I walk through here, I need to understand what the possibilities can be after the property has been rehabbed. So if I'm walking through here, I need to understand how much it's going to cost for my client, my buyer or my investor to replace the roof, replace the windows, come in here and tear up the floor and put hardwood flooring down. I need to understand those numbers. And in our course, we actually give you what we call our repair estimator that breaks it down by square footage. Yes, you gotta do a little bit more work than guess, you know, $30, $40, but the more accurate you are, the better salesperson you become. And then when you and when you're done, you, once you go through it a few times, then you can just walk through a through a bathroom and say, okay, well, the, I need to I need to place a toilet. Okay, that's 150 or that's 100, that's 200, depending on the level of toilets you're putting in. I put 200 dollars in mine, so that's 200. I know the tub the tub is gonna be 450 to 500. Um, a new a new vanity that's gonna be around the same 450 to 500. So if I know just my rough cost. And then if we got to change some plumbing around or if, if I need to change the light fixtures and, and things like that. Um, but it's easier when you've done it a few times and you really want to know the cost, because when you really know the cost, it makes it easier to sell. Um, because when we, we get stuff sent to my email all day, I'm on, I'm on several buy lists. She's on several buyers list and we get the property. Uh, property purchase price is 70,000. Rehab is 45,000. ARV is 210. OK, so why are you not doing that deal then? Because that, that, that's a great deal. Why, why are you not doing that deal? Um, and it's simply because that rehab cost is really not forty five thousand dollars. And they don't know that. And so being able to have accurate rehab costs as a wholesaler, you get better respect from your buyers because no one wants to constantly go out to your deals. And when they get out there, it's really not a $50,000 rehab. It's really double that or triple you, or triple that because you didn't know your numbers and your numbers weren't accurate. So it is absolutely, absolutely key to understand construction and rehab. And we go over in detail construction, rehab, 
numbers, pricing, because at the end of the day, a lot of wholesalers are wholesaling in order to fix and flip. That's the, that's the, that's the end game. Get in with wholesaling, build up capital, buy your own property to fix and flip it. So you want to make sure that you have enough knowledge to do that. Yeah, you don't want to be selling other people's dreams so much and then when it's time to do your own deal, you didn't bought your own dream because these rehab numbers are not correct. So you got to understand the, the rehab numbers. And, and it's not that hard. Um, you just got to be realistic and stop thinking about if you had your cousin or your uncle or the guy down the street doing the work and think about the cost of a real contract that's licensed, that's pulling mm -hmm. permits. And that will go also, like if you're super new, Get in some contractors and paying, paying people for their time, paying the contractor to come and give you a, a accurate scope of work of the property. Even if you got to pay him $50 or $100, give you an accurate scope of work so now you can look at his numbers and you can see where you are off that possibly or you can see where that little mathematical term wasn't so accurate. And that will help you. You do that a couple of times and uh, not for free. Pay for people time so you can get quality, quality information. And as that contractor is walking you through, nine times out of ten, if you're paying for his time, he's going to talk about the project. He's I was going to say, ask about questions. A ask questions. Uh, he, you know, he tell you that he arrived at this price for just say the roof. Well, why is that? Oh, because this particular roof, I got to do a complete tear off. I'm not just mm -hmm. putting new shingles down. I got to actually re replace the 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 the, the, the wood up, up under the shingles. So you know, things like that, different. Um, uh, let me see. Electrical. Electrical could, could, could change the deal. You may just need to put some cans in, but you don't need to upgrade the full service. The, the service may already be 100 or 200 amps, but it's just don't, like, like this particular house. There's no lighting in the ceiling. So mm -hmm. that's something that we want to put in here, whether, whether it's cans or some fixtures, but it would be some lights to go up in there. Um, and you want to understand those costs. So guys, Let's talk about functionality. Looking at this particular house, we walk in and it's kind of closed off. The kitchen is closed off to the living room, dining room area. And nowadays, people like that open concept. So let's walk through here and talk about how much it will cost to remove these walls, open up, open up this kitchen into the living room, dining room. So for right now, I would actually definitely remove all of this wall right here, although our refrigerator is right here. Now we need to talk about functionality and reconfiguring this whole kitchen to make this make sense. So it is kind of small, but once we open this up, we can, we can actually, this will actually appear bigger. So right here you have the stove, maybe a microwave, the countertop space. So what I would possibly do, I'll remove that stove and I'll put the refrigerator right here on this wall. So this wall here will have your refrigerator, your sink, your cabinet space. And because I removed all of this here, now I can have a nice island and put the stove inside the island. And now we have actually made this space a lot more functional. You want to break down like the price of this kitchen? All right. Um, so yeah, breaking, breaking, breaking this down. So one, one, of the, one of the most important things when we talk about removing walls is making sure if it's structural or not. Um, this particular wall is not structural. Um, and one of the reasons why I, I, I can tell easily, um, you know, this is the middle of the, of the house. Um, so this can be taken out. Um, so it's just drywall. Yeah, so this, 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 this is just drywall. Um, so for the cabinets, I would say anywhere between $2,500 and $3,000 for, for new cabinets all, all the way around. About the same price for, for new countertops if I'm going with quartz. If I'm going with granite, it would be slightly cheaper. Maybe I can get the, the granite for about $1,800. Um, anything else we don't we don't really do a full appliance uh, package. full appliance package that'll be about another 2500 mm -hmm. um, so typically we're looking at about roughly about eighty five hundred dollars for the kitchen when I get to talking about the new flooring and backsplash mm -hmm. so pay attention to this because in a lot of older homes you have these um, 
Soffits. Soffits. And right now these little cabinets is probably like a 30 inch. You want the 42 inch cabinets. And actually when you, when you remove the soffits and put the 42 inch cabinets on the wall, it actually, the kitchen appears bigger. And it's much more modern. Of course, I think the white cabinets is really the, the thing that people are going with. And I will stick with white for this smaller space so it can appear bigger. So you say about 8500 just for this kitchen space here? And that's just raw material. That does not include labor. That does not include labor. So you can at least know that in material cost in this space, it'll be about 8500 What would you say possibly labor would be for them to install the cabinets and demo, remove all of this, um, these cabinets out, paint, lay the floors, and just give a range because your labor cost is going to differentiate based off of your experience honestly if i have a contractor that i'm used to working with I'm, i give him a lot of work he's also going to give me really good deals but if you are new um you probably not going to get the the really good deals because you're just building that relationship with that newer contractor so we'll give you a range and, then, no, and labor costs differ from from area to area state to state midwest and out west and the east coast and down south also so you know me saying that our numbers are $8,500 for this kitchen, that's kind of going to be somewhere around a consensus uh, in, in our area. But in, in California, those same cabinets may be maybe 30, 40% more expensive. Um, so no, that, that's just some small things to take into consideration. Um, but yeah, that, that relationship with the contractor is key. But and, that's the same thing with the labor also, right? In yeah. certain areas, their labor may be higher. Yeah. Certain areas, the labor may be lower. Yeah. Um, down south, the labor may be a little bit lower. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if, you're dealing, if you're coming from anywhere like Chicago, New York, Boston, uh, L.A., our construction costs are really high because we have a labor force. The labor union kind of controls how much those guys get paid. So... Um, outside of those cities, you get a, a, a greater deal when it comes as far as labor. Um, so, yeah, us in these bigger cities, we do pay a premium for, for labor. How much are you paying for labor? Are you paying per hour? Are you paying per project? When you've got your contractor looking inside, how is he pricing you? Well, you, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it, it will be in the scope of work, but how, how, how that goes is really up to the contractor. Uh, so, some contractors just know they work and they just not touching nothing that's less than ten thousand dollars and that's just the way that the, the way that they do their numbers does that work for all of us all the time no because some people want to know exactly how much you're charging me to touch this kitchen how much are you charging me to do the floor how much you charging me so you know the, the sad thing about it is that all contractors don't know the numbers like that but they do know their costs and they calculate how they charge you, but how much three guys is gonna cost them to be here, and then how much this is gonna cost, and and that's kind of how they how they get that number. Does that work all the time? No, it doesn't, because we had a contractor who 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 we charge us like that. And we're like, man, how do you how do your numbers never make sense? It's because he don't really know how to calculate the number for the job based on the square footage and so forth. He can only go by how much money he make and how much he's charging his subs. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, that's something that you, you definitely want to ask your contractor, how did you arrive at this price? And they'll tell you, oh, well, based on the square footage or based on this, my minimum price is this to do this. So you'll, you'll get an understanding. Yeah, I mean, and the good thing about what, what we provide um, in our course is the repair estimator, which actually includes the labor and materials. So you'll have a lot more accurate pricing if you took a, a, a house 1,500 square feet and you go into hardwood flooring and you type in 1,500 square feet and the estimator actually gives you the price of the material plus the labor, at least you have an average price of what it should cost. Now, granted, if your if it comes up, it may come up a little bit more, it may come up a little bit less, but you'll be a lot, bit, a, a lot better off knowing something a little closer than that calculated math quote that they give you. If you guys are doing this deal, your contractor comes in, how, how do you think it's going to go down for your final like, For this whole house? Just this, this is one step. Oh, uh, this kitchen, this, this kitchen will probably cost me about 10 grand. Mm -hmm. Labor and material. Labor and materials. Yeah. 10,000 labor and materials for the kitchen. Demo, open in it, open up the arm. Um, yeah. Maybe, kitchen. maybe 11. 
because I didn't, I didn't include demo and them taking this out and then. Uh,